Good evening, God saints, and welcome to Scott's Chapel Online Ministries. This is the Bible Moment with Pastor Fred. Yay, here we are, 2022, a new year, a new way of moving forward through what we got to do. And what we want to do is uh, continue to provide our Bible moments, but also we want to move into uh, Bible study uh, formats in our church school. And I, I want to start doing it on uh, our Zoom link also. So I need some feedback from you in, in designing and implementing this. And we'll just start uh, building it as we go. But the question that I have in my mind is, what is the best time for you and what time, you know, what day and what time? You know, so just give me a shout out by email or text or give the pastor a call and let me know so I can get a consensus from the group. And we'll be meeting and talking and I'll just be posting it up and we'll go from there. But also in giving those shots out. I, I appreciate each and every one of you joining with us in our uh, Bible moments and everything that we are trying to do online. But be sure to like, you know, subscribe, share, you know, uh, these posts, and also give me some comments also. I, I know a lot of people watch it, but only a few say something you know, say amen or, you know, any type of response. And that's going to help with the algorithms. That's going to help with the growth of the ministry is the participation. You know, it is a participation, even in our Christian faith. You know, no no one is an island. We, we don't do it by ourselves. We do it in unity, together, as one body. Different parts, but connected and be in one body with one another. So today's uh, Bible moment would be the exercise of faith, the exercise of faith. And we'll be touching on many uh, passages of scripture that I wanted to share with you, but it is really the building up of our faith. I, you know, it's not just that we go to church. It's not just that we you know, say I'm a Christian and we do this and have lip service. We're seeing a lot of lip service in our country, in our society. You know, people are posting stuff, saying all kind of things. Because the, the truth be known, you'll post and say stuff, but you won't say it to their face. Hey, can I get a amen? You know, we're big and Billy bad, but, you know, when we're texting or when we're online and, you know, using our uh, First Amendment rights to you know, free speech and whatnot. But we forgot about this socialization when we come together. You know, we just really need to start activating the blessings and the faith that God has given to us. We don't. We haven't. And even as you approach the New Year, people are doing New Year's resolutions and trying to do a change. Well, change starts with the idea of committing to change, of starting, beginning by choosing. And in the building up of our faith and the exercise of our faith, that's the number one thing. Do you want to? I remember Jesus speaking to at the pool of Bethesda, uh, an invalid that was there, 38 years, I believe. And he asked him the stunning question, do you want to be well? Do you want to have a new life? Do you want the abundant life that God has? Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to experience God and his fullness in your life, in the here and now? Well, it begins with starting. Jesus responded to the man and says, pick up your mat and walk. You have to choose. You have to decide. So as we go through this, let's turn to our first scripture, which is in Colossians chapter uh, 3. 
Now remember, we're talking about the exercise of faith, the building up of our faith. Chapter 3 says, verse 1, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You know, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs, in verse 5, belongs to your earthly nature. You used to walk in those ways, but now you must rid yourself of those things. Let the past go. 2021 is gone. 2020 is gone. This is a new day. We have to move forward, but it begins by picking up our mat. Let's get it started. Let's start doing what God says to do. The other passage I want to take your attention to is in Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. I'm not there yet. Right? But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So we have to let those things go. And that's what we're about at Scott's, trying to do at Scott's Chapel. And that's what we're trying to teach is I want to activate our faith. I want us to start exercising our faith. I, the focus of the ministry that God has given me is to get to the basics. How does this thing work? What is it that I need to be doing, Lord? Here I am. Use me. But I have to submit myself unto him. I have to uh, present myself as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing, and acceptable. That's my worship. That is my service. I need to get into the presence of the Lord. So it starts by that choosing. And then it begins by me coming into his presence. There's another thing that I'm, I'm trying to get us to focus on is once we get into the presence of God by worshiping God, by talking to God through prayer and learning to love God. Wow. You, you'll be surprised what a, how it will transform your life right now. Now turn with me to... Oh, First John, chapter five. First John, chapter five. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the father loves his child as well. Verse two says, this is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not bur burdensome for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. That is one through four in First John chapter five. You see, we we set our hearts on him we begin by responding to god's love for us he loved me that he gave himself for me he provided a way of escape and he provided a power for me to live right now and transform my circumstances and when I start getting into his presence, when I start seeking him with all my heart, when I start loving God with all my heart, soul, and mind, his love is the transforming power that is necessary 
for our faith to flourish, for me to flourish, for me to be able to love. Once I understand that love of God and that comes to worshiping him, that comes to speaking to him and talking to him, which is prayer. It, it becomes transforming into victory over the world. But not only that, I want you to now go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. We start by choosing by wanting to be, by, by receiving it, and then by worshiping, getting into God's presence and worshiping God and talking with him and loving God. And then we do what Peter says, therefore rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind. Verse two, like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk which is the word of god so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the lord is good once i got into the presence of god and once i started loving god and i understand how good god is in my life and i've tasted his his goodness his love for me, it causes me to love myself, but when I love myself and I love my God, I'm going to love my neighbor, and it causes me also to be obedient to what it is I'm feeding on. But I start by feeding on the Word of God. Now, another passage I want you to go to, go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter three, 14. Second Timothy chapter three, beginning at verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned. Learn what? The word of God. I fed on that word. I'm feeding, studying, meditating on that word. And now he says, continue in what you have learned by that word, convinced of because you know those from whom you have learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, the word of God, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. I'm building up my faith. I'm exercising my faith, but I need to know my faith. Amen. I need to know this word of God, but not only know it, I need to put it into practice. And then he says, all scripture is God breathed, inspired, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training, training in righteousness, the exercise, training in righteousness. Why? so that the servant of God, verse 17, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I'm tired of seeing the church. I'm tired of seeing Christians breaking down like the rest of the world. Don't know where, I, it's like ostriches with our heads in the sand. We, we can't speak a word of encouragement. We can't speak a word through adversity. We, we can't build one another up and we don't have a word for our situation that we're in and we're not experiencing victory in our life. That's because we're not training. See, when I'm, uh, this title of exercising of the faith, the exercise, I've been in sports all my life, right? And I've been uh, in work, you know, for the majority of my life since I was 14 years old. And it, you have to be trained. I, I, we went to education from K through 12 through upper uh, level collegiate uh, education. Why? It is preparation. It is training so that I am prepared, prepared for living. See, you can't live until you've been prepared for living, until you've been trained to live. Now, some things you can, you can just go out and just do. But the, mo the majority, the worthwhile, the, the higher level of living requires training. 
you got to train. You got to practice. And some things you can't do by yourself. It needs to be done collectively. It needs to be done in a class. It needs to be done in a group setting. You can't play football by yourself. You need 11. And then you need another team. Right? So it needs to be 22 people. What you going to You going to run and tackle yourself? Run and pass you the ball? No. Basketball. It takes 10. Five and five. You know, to play these games. It takes a group, a body, joined together in unity to do a team sport. It is a team sport. Right? But it requires that training, that practice. Our life is how we practice. Because how you practice is how you play. I wish I can get an amen. But these are some important scriptures. Uh, you know, so we start by choosing and deciding. I'm going to be different. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to choose you this day what God I am going to serve. If God is good, then serve him. Then it begins by worshiping, being in his presence, getting inspired through the Holy Spirit to give us the strength to do what we purpose in our hearts to do. Then it requires the word of God getting into me, studying to show myself approved, a workman rightly able to divide the word of truth and using this as a building block of my life and not only putting it in my mind but to be obedient to it by doing it and practicing it in my life and another way we practice is by serving by doing by going out and loving by going out and meeting needs so i think this is very powerful for us the exercises of our faith and I want us to get together, amen, and I want us to work out. I didn't like going, you know, just to exercise, just to exercise. I wanted to, my exercise was to do something. What? To run the 100 meters and the 200 meters. That's why I practice, so that I can cross that finish line. I didn't go to practice in 90 degrees, 98 degrees, having pads on and all this stuff. No, it was to make tackles. It was to catch that ball and to score, to get the first down, to score the touchdown. It was for a, a, a different goal. The goal wasn't to practice. The goal was to take that practice and then get to the victory. And the same thing at the at the dojo or karate school where we were taught it wasn't to learn kata it wasn't to learn the various exercise and breathing techniques it was to a stop an assailant in their attack it was to stop my opponent in the most efficient and effective way to neutralize the threat amen and so it is with the word of God and with our faith. It is to draw me closer to my Lord and Savior. It is to be like him. It is to manifest the blessings of God upon my life, my household, to my children and my children's children. And to carry on a legacy for them. It is to be in the house of the Lord. It is to be called according to his purpose and to receive that as a child of the most high God. That's the goal. Everything else is just the practice and the exercises that we do to achieve that goal. But you have to want it. You have to want to be blessed. Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? So God bless you. God smile upon you. This is the exercise of our faith. Are you ready to do it? Then give us a shout out so we can get started. Happy Sunday.